Hi guys, right, so I've been looking for a new daily driver for the last few weeks or months really, um, but I didn't really know what to get. My old CT, Lexus CT200 that I've been using for the last 10 months is now gone. Um, well, it's not actually gone, it's in the showroom at work, but it's up for sale, so it'll be gone soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I didn't really know what I wanted, so I knew I wanted something sporty and fairly quick. I didn't want a diesel four-wheel drive. Um, so yeah, I was looking at all sorts. I wanted a an S3 saloon, because I think they're the perfect daily driver, really. Not too big, I think they look really classy, quick enough, and they won't break the bank, really, to run. But the trouble with every S3 and every Golf R in the UK, 98% of them end up being stolen. I don't know where I've got that figure from, to be honest, but I'm sure it's about that sort of figure. Everyone I know that's had a Golf R or an Audi S3 has had it stolen at some point. And I know that's what you have insurance for, but I just couldn't be bothered with the headache of, of, of owning one of those. So then I was looking at a C63 Coupe, like a 2012 old shape, because um, they're quite cheap now, actually, or well, they're quite reasonably priced. But then I was kind of put off that because I thought, if I buy a five or six-year-old C63, what sort of life will that have had? It will have been thrashed and wheel spun around every housing estate in the whole of Britain. So that kind of put me off. And it's it's difficult really, because if you want something even remotely sporty and you're buying used, you pretty much guarantee that it's been thrashed. I didn't really want to um, buy a headache. So my search moved on to something that would possibly have been owned by a businessman or businesswoman at some point that would have been serviced properly and looked after properly. And that led me on to the BMW 6 Series. So a couple of years ago, I had an old shaped 6 Series. I had a 645 with a 4.4 V8. And I loved that car. Had it for the best part of a year. But I ended up getting rid of it in the end because it was just a little bit too old. Um, and just annoying things, really. I couldn't connect my phone to it. I couldn't play my music through the, um, through the audio system. Didn't have any cup holders. Why would they make a 60 grand Grand Tour with no cup holders? Uh, there was no heated seats. Just a few silly things, really, that made me fall out with it. So, yeah, I thought if I got the updated new version of the 6 Series, then they might have ironed out some of those kinks. And they have. This is the, the new shape 640i, which doesn't have the V8, unfortunately. It's got a 3.0-litre six-cylinder uh, twin-turbo. The old 6 Series I had was a naturally aspirated 4.4 V8, <clears throat> whereas this is just a six-cylinder, but because it's twin-turbo, the, the horsepower is about the same. I think the, the old V8 was a 3.30 horsepower, and this is 3.20, so more or less the same. I did prefer the old V8, to be honest. The, um, the burbling noise that it made just when you're pottering around town, this doesn't have. It still sounds good, though, this, but... It's no V8. So I just thought if I bought a 640 or 650 or something like this, it would have just been driven to the golf club rather than wheel spinning around a Tesco car park on a Friday night. That was my theory anyway. And I think I'm right. So yeah, I've had this for nearly a week and I do love this car actually. I think I made the right decision. Every time I jump in it, I enjoy it. And it's got so many extras, this car. It's not the quickest thing I've ever driven, but it's it's quick enough. And you've got the flappy paddle um, paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And yeah, with the twin turbos. Yeah, it's quick enough. <clears throat> well, quicker than I thought, actually. Yeah, it's got the head-up display too, which tells you the um, the speed you're doing and the the speed limit of the road, which is. Oh, I've just realised I was slightly over it then. So this one, unlike the last one, I'm happy to report, has two cup holders, heated seats, heated steering wheel, um, reverse camera, 360 camera. It's got these blind spot cameras on the front bumpers, left and right. So if you're at a blind junction, you can see what's coming, which is quite useful because the bonnet on this thing is huge. It's a big car, this. It's certainly not a, it certainly doesn't handle like a TTS or a Boxster or a even a 3 Series. It, it feels like a big car. I've got used to it now, but initially for the first couple of days, it felt like I was in a 7 Series. 
it's probably how like a an S-Class convertible feels or something like that. It is a big, big wallowing car. Certainly not as, as sharp to drive as a, uh, a Z4 or a, you know, a little two-seat sports car. So yeah, this is the 640 petrol. Um, they do do a 640 diesel, which has a, a three liter twin turbo diesel, which has got good reviews and gets way better MPG than this one does. But I just, I was adamant I didn't want a diesel. You might save money up front with the cost of fuel because it'll do 35 miles per gallon, whereas this is only doing 20. But in the long run, it'll cost you a set of injectors, DPF, everything else that goes wrong with the diesel. I just, I just hate them. But they also do a 650, which I did consider, which has got 100 horsepower more than this. And that's a, a 4.4 litre V8, which I assume is the, the same engine that was in my old 6 Series. But that's a twin turbo as well. But they're a little bit more expensive and I thought, do I really need an extra 100 horsepower for like an extra two or three grand? And the answer was no, really. So yeah, it's not a sharp, nimble, precise little sports car. This it's more of a more of a Grand Tourer. Imagine you could jump in this and drive to the south of Spain with the roof down, and then get out and still not have a bad back. And I think that's what they were designed for, really. More of a gentleman's cruiser than a um, out-and-out sports car. I mean, the extras that this car has. I think when the time comes to get rid of it, I don't know what I'd replace it with because I've just got used to having so many of these options that I didn't even know I needed, but now I couldn't really live without. The interior is really good, much more premium than the old 6 Series. I've got leather everywhere and it's, it's got this contrast stitching which looks really nice. The steering's not too heavy. It's not light, but it's not, not too heavy like a typical BMW. So fuel-wise, it's no Lexus CT. Surprise, surprise. So the old CT used to do 400 miles to a tank and a tank would cost me about 40 quid. This one I filled up yesterday and it took 70 pounds. I don't know how many miles you're gonna to get to a tank, but I guess it won't be anywhere near the Lexus. But I don't do that many miles anyway, so I wasn't really concerned about fuel consumption that much. I mean, the main reason for getting the CT was because I just wanted to put some extra money into my company to try and build it up a little bit and save some money on fuel and save some money on tax and everything else, but now I thought I may as well treat myself to something a bit, a bit nicer. So in terms of MPG, my old 645 used to average about 17, and this average is about 20 or 21. There's not an awful lot in it really, but it is an improvement and you get about the same power, so I suppose it's a no-brainer. Also, the road tax is cheap. If this was well, my old 6 Series, I think, was in the £520 bracket, and this is only 250 because they've managed to get the emissions down. It is a big car, this, though. You know, I was in America last week, and I kept seeing these 640s and 650s driving along with the roof down and stuff. And every time I saw one, I kept thinking, yeah, I like the look of those. But when you're on Sunset Boulevard, they don't look that big. Yeah, on these little country roads here, it feels enormous. So because it's so big, the interior space is really good. Oh well, up front anyway. Up front I've got loads of room. The back seats, well, they're typical of a four-seat convertible really. They're not, not very big and there's not much leg room. I wouldn't want to be trapped back there for a long journey, not unless I was either four years old or my name was Oscar Pistorius. Now, I don't like the fact that it's got the start-stop. I hate that feature. And on this one, when you turn the start-stop off, you get this bright amber light, which during the day you don't realize, but at night it's really bright. But that, I'm kind of nitpicking there. I also don't like where they place the button for the roof because it's in the exact place where you would expect to find the electronic handbrake. So every time you try and set off, you end up pressing the roof to go down rather than the, the handbrake button but that is the very definition of first world problems. I'll soon get used to it, I'm sure. Now the boot's quite big. There's quite a lot of space for a convertible. But as with the previous generation 6 Series, I mean, mine was a coupe, but the same with the, um, the previous generation convertible. 
I don't know why they finished the roof off like this. It's, it's a bit of a weird shape. I don't know why they didn't just slope the back of the roof like a, um, or like any other convertible. And because of that design, you've got this weird window that sits at 90 degrees, which you've got a separate button for, so you can raise or lower that rear window like you can on an old Freelander, which will be handy if you ever need to pick up a few lengths of timber from B&Q. So if you're considering one, when you start it up, make sure it doesn't smoke because that could be a sign that the turbos are worn. And if you're worried about fuel consumption, then go for the 640 diesel. I mean, I don't like it, but it is a very good car. And if you do lots of miles, that is the sensible choice. It is very good on fuel. You'll average about 35 miles per gallon, probably 45 or 50 on a run. But I don't understand why, and it's not just BMW that do this, everybody seems to do this. I don't know why people make a diesel convertible. Surely the last thing you want when the sun's out and you want the roof down and wind in your hair, why would you want the noise from an old tugboat in your ears? I mean, hearing a nice petrol engine is part of, the, part of the fun. I also like the fact that you can put the roof down at like, I think it's probably up to 20 miles an hour, but you can do it on the move. Some convertibles have had like, like the, old, um, the old box that you had to put the handbrake on before you could do it. You can also close the um, the roof on this from the remote control, which is quite good. Which is handy if you suddenly remember that you've left it outside with the roof down and it starts to rain. Which in the north of England is a very real possibility. So I've never actually driven it with the roof down yet, so let's try that. Even though it's eight degrees. Let's try it in sport mode. It does sound well, this car. You can feel already in sport mode, the, the gear changes are a bit more aggressive. So yeah, thanks for watching. I just wanted to share with you my, uh, my new daily. Until next time, thanks for watching.